Hi, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and I'm just a hacker having fun. I know that I was going to mention that I was going to start digging into into the individual screens that uh, made up my LifeWalker demo and show you some bits and pieces of words that I've been working on. But I felt it important to take a small aside to show you um, some fourth basics that will need to be explained so that you can understand some of the bits and pieces that I have on these screens instead of just plunging directly into them. Now I'm not going to go very much into just bare fundamentals here, but I'm going to show you just enough so that you can actually understand what I'm look what we'll, 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 pardon me, what we will be looking at on the proceeding tutorials. Let's start off with some stack manipulation. In fourth, everything gets put onto the stack. This is in stark contrast to other languages like C, like Pascal, etc., etc., where the stack is hidden away from you and you don't touch it. The compiler does all the, the necessary gymnastics to take and put things onto and pull things off of the stack. In fourth, fourth gives you the stack and says you use it to put parameters on to return values, everything. So with that, let's begin. We'll start this demonstration basically by putting five numbers onto the stack. Now, those numbers are actually sitting on the stack. And to help out here, I'm actually going to use uh, the debugger tools on my fig fourth disk to show you the contents of the stack. Now we've loaded in a number of different words here that can help us out, but the one that's most relevant to us is the S word. S is showing us the stack, and you'll notice as we put the numbers on the stack, it put them on top of the preceding number, pushing the others downward. This is what makes forth what we know as a last in, first out type of stack. Now, if we were to take and use the uh, dot command to print these numbers, it will display these numbers, but it will also take them off of the stack, as is evidence if we type S again. Now we're down to three values. Now, let's say we want to take and add the top two numbers in the stack, three and two, all we have to do is do a plus, and we get 5. Now notice that the 3 and the 2 were taken off the stack, and the 5 was put in its place. Okay? So if you want to use that number again for something else, you would duplicate it. So let's go ahead and pull that number off the stack. We're going to take and pull that number off, pull the, pull that number off the stack here. For that, we'll use a word called drop. If we look at stack again, we see that we're left with one number. So we'll go ahead and put the 2, 3, 4, and the 5 back on the stack. As you can see, back to where we were. In addition to doing that, we can, of course, take and swap numbers on the stack. If we want to take and swap the top two numbers on the stack, no problem. If we take a look again, we'll see the four and the five have been swapped. If you swap again, you'll see they're back in the original order. If you want to duplicate a number on the stack, Dup takes the top no most number, duplicates it on the stack. Drop again, pull it off the stack. These are very important words, especially when you start dealing with control structures, when you start dealing with conditionals, etc., and basic logic. Because many of these control structures and whatnot 
will consume the numbers that you're testing against in order to do what they're needing to do. They'll take them off the stack. So if you're wanting to take and, ch and check a number against multiple tests, you will want to duplicate it before each test. Now let's take and do some practical stuff here with this. Let's say, for example, that we want to take and make a little loop here that counts down from 10 to 1. No problem. All we need for that is to make a new word, whatever, call it whatever we want to, but we use a, uh, we use a word called begin. Now you'll notice right here that I put a zero, uh, that I put a, that I put a number before this. That is, we're, we're explicitly putting that number 10 on the stack, and we're going to use it a bit later. With that, we're literally going to take and duplicate the number and display it. Now I duplicated it because remember when we use the dot it pulls it off the stack. Well if it pulls it off the stack we can't get it back. So we need to take and save a copy of it so we can test against it later. So let's say we do that and we're left again with the original number 10 and we want to take and subtract 1 from that. So we use 1 and the minus word puts the 1 on the stack and then subtracts 1 from 10. We're left with 9. And we could, at this point, basically say almost. There's a problem with this, though. Well, let's walk through it. We put a 0 on the stack and we check to see if it's equal to zero. Can we see it? check to see if we're equal to zero? Well, there's a problem. What's basically happening is it's doing the test and consuming the number, and we have no number left over to begin the loop again to display it back here at the start. So we need to guard against taking too many numbers off the stack by duplicating it again before our test, like I said before. Now let's break this down a little bit. Go through the go through the loop once manually, just out here and out here manually. But ten, we put a ten on the stack. We take and then we look at the stack, ten. Then we go ahead and we duplicate it. Then we take and display it, and we're left with the 10 here. Now we go ahead and we 1 minus it. Now we're left with a 9. We then take and we duplicate it again and we're left with two nines so that we can do the test. And we check that against 0. It's not a zero yet, so the loop will continue. If that had returned a one, it would say it was true, and the loop would terminate. So there we go. So going back to our loop here, this is how it functions. We'll go ahead, and I'll use vList here to remember test loop. There's our test loop right there. And there's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So there you go. Conversely, if we wanted to explicitly count down from any number whatsoever, we would replace the initial number.
with just begin and not, and not explicitly put the number on the stack. We would just say that we would take and do all the necessary gymnastics with it. And then with that now we have a, tet a loop that can go in any direction there so that's basically how you would use these individual bits and pieces to do tests so with that I can now continue on to the next tutorial and you can have a better understanding of basic control structures now I will take and end this actually uh, with one other thing the if statement here so you can see how an if statement works an if statement works similarly it's just uh, you're checking for zero or one and if so you have an if then else etc that you can test against but since everything is reverse polish notation things are in slightly different places than you would normally expect so let's say we want to check for uh, check see if the screen color is either red or blue I'll call blue 148 and I'll call uh, red 67 we make a new word and we start testing against it so in order for us to do that The first part is the conditional that we're going to test. We test uh, let's see. One forty eight. Mm-hmm. Green is not blue. Then, so we'll go ahead and do a screen color test here. Screen is blue. So there you go. Now, moving on, we'll be able to take, now with this explained, we'll take and push on forward with the screens that are on my disk, and I'll show you how they work. Until next time.